the top. What top? Where does the top start? Hi, welcome to another okay. episode of the Show and Tell. Gotcha. Uh, are we going? Yep. Uh, hello, welcome to another episode of the Show and Tell Show. I'm one of your hosts, Chris Granjo, and with me today, Daniel Nguyen. Good to Daniel. meet you, sir. Good to meet you. Meet you. Um, Daniel here is our local elves aficionado in the Northwest. He has won a couple of SCG Seattle Opens with the deck, and it's true. He just they're not one top aided. And you top aided the recent Legacy IQ that was right. just here in December yep. with this deck, with this crazy this version of the deck, this crazy deck. Uh, how long have you been playing elves? Uh, I've been playing elves since uh, every iteration of elves. I've been playing it since it was a horrible, horrible deck. I just thought it was fun, and, and then I just didn't stop playing it. And it's, then it got way better. And then it got way better, which is great for me. Uh, it's worked out great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so now that it's a bit more of a streamlined machine, mm -hmm. let's let's see how you work it. Okay. So we'll jump right to the spells because that's, you know, it's it's a it's a mostly a creature deck, but to me the the creatures are just fluff, and the spells yeah. are the actual good stuff. So you got your glimpses, which can draw you a million cards, and that's where the combo part of the deck comes from. Uh, the green sun zenith is a oh, not don't touch that. Green sun zenith is a uh, kind of a utility card. It's a toolboxy card. You can find whatever you need. And since there's a lot of different you know random pieces that you would want to put together at any certain point, it's great for that. It can also randomly get you the win con. Um, and the natural order everyone knows just gets you giant hoof. Or if you're unfortunate, sometimes it gets you publish visionary. You know, Boo. depending on the situation. Uh, and then we got our two crater hoofs. So that's uh, eleven kill spells in my estimation because these all all these spells have the potential to end the game. Yeah, but uh, um, so unlike other decks that have their <coughs> kill spell like Storm and Tendrils of Agony, for example, sure. Uh, any of these kill spells, like you only need one of them from a very early turn, and you can just win. Yeah, yeah. Th this deck doesn't require a lot of setup, I guess. Uh, it's well, it. it requires setup in the, it kind. Of, it kind of does, kind of doesn't. I can just w play one spell and win. Yeah. On like turn three, but the, that, that requires turn one and two to be developing mana. Yeah, but yeah. So, so a card like Glimpse. You can have a crappy hand. Oh, it's Cap's creature. Yeah, and just definitely. Cascade them to I've done win. ridiculous, stupid, you know, unforgivable things with Glimpse of Nature. <laughs> um, so yeah, that you definitely have the potential for that, and people know that. So, and you know they know that. They know it, and I know you know it. There's mind games you can play there. <laughs> so oftentimes it's a very good. It's a very good counter bait. I I've played Glimpse with just garbage in my hand, and then they counter it, and then just I to just get a force of will and next turn yeah. natural order. You know, I mean. I just play, sometimes you just play for fun. It was like I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I've mind tricked people with it before just because they're so scared of it. I've pl I've played glimpse and passed the turn before. Listen, uh, <laughs> the master. Yeah, it happens. Uh, yeah. And so then that, those are your kind of game ending effects. Um, over here we have I call these the best friend team: Wildwood Symbiote and the Elvish Visionary. So annoying. They're they're <laughs> the most fun cards in Magic. This is the best. These are the best cards in Magic. Screw the whole Storm deck. This is the best synergy in the whole game. Uh, this one, you can bounce it and do like infinite ground blocks and draw a bunch of cards with it by replaying it. Um, so that's good for that. Also, your symbiote can save. Am I just doing just a general deck tech? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the symbiote can save any of your elf dudes. It is It itself is not an elf. So it, if they don't shoot it first, they're just punting in front of you. And that happens more than you think. Not not as much anymore because people are smarter about it. But people are. But like people haven't played against elves. <laughs> I think they take the name elves and just assume that that guy's just some yeah. dude. For many years, it had scrub connotations. And then somehow now people see the deck and they're like, oh, this guy must know what the hell he's doing. Not always the case. Um, so, yeah, it's tricky. Uh, okay, so those are that's a primary card advantage uh, element to go along with Glimpse. Um, you got your Nail Sentinels and your Heritage Druids here, which is um, a big part of the going off part of the deck. I only run three right now because this is more mid-range focus build. Um, it's funny how you can just add, two, you know, go up to four and now it's a combo build. But this yeah. deck is very tight list, so, you know, you have like five card leeway with the lists, and those two cards, Metal <clears throat> Sentinel, Heritage Druid, just basically allow you to make crazy mana. infinite mana. Yeah, when they play together, you can do stupid stuff. Um, and Birch Soul Ranger is kind of um, more of a utility card too, because it helps you play your sideboard cards. And you know, it sounds silly, but when you have your Birch Soul Ranger, you only need two elves to make a mana, and yep. Heritage Druid requires three, and that seems like a really subtle difference, but that can make the difference in the game sometimes. It can be relevant sometimes. Yeah, one mana can make a difference between winning and losing the game. I've also heard stories of you hard casting a progenitus using Birch Lore Ranger. Uh, that happened once. <laughs> um, yeah, it's true. That definitely happened. <laughs> but I hard cast a credit hoof first. And, got, and, got <laughs> and then a bunch of stuff happened. It's a long story, but it happened. <laughs> um, didn't lose that game. Uh, and then you have your Deathrite Shaman here, which is almost a deck by itself, especially because you can untap it with these two guys. You can do crazy things. Definitely in the running for the best one draw yeah. creature in match. Yeah, this is the best Deathrite deck in the format, just because I have more untaps than anybody else. I win every Deathrite war. I'm kind of I'm kind of spoiled like that. 
Um, I think the most damage I've done in one turn is 10 with a death right. A single death right? With a single death right. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then, okay, so that's those are the basic bits. You got your crew credit host, whatever those. Um, these are kind of the utility slots. Um, some players don't pick these up, but, you know, I, I'm kind of, uh, as you can see, the deck is foiled. Yeah. I, I like toys. Like you said, this stuff. has been your deck for a long time. Yeah, so, so I, I, these are fun slots to me. They're not essential. Uh, they're more like, you know, I just like to have a well-rounded deck. So this guy can kill, you know, artifacts, counterbalances, GTAs, whatever, all that kind of random stuff. Uh, scavenging is just great in general. Uh, I'm never unhappy to draw him. He can do all, you know, yeah, great he, card. He can mess up people's day pretty easily. Yeah, and then this one is the more atypical choice. The Rens Run Pack Master. You might want to do, a, like, a screen pop-up of that thing. Oh, we will. No one knows what that card does. <laughs> I do. Um, I've died to it multiple times. <laughs> it's very, it's very cute. Uh, I'm not sure how good it is yet, but it's fun, and that's half the battle it, for it me. It doesn't seem like it'd be really good until the moment you play it, and then you realize, oh crap, I'm going to die in two turns. <laughs> yeah, usually if they don't answer, the game's over. So they, yeah. they can kill it right away if they want. Oh, also one thing to note: with the champion trigger, uh, it's not targeting, so they can't like zap the guy you champion. They have to wipe your whole board. So yeah. it's not, not as bad as you think. Uh, okay, mana over here, which is, you know, you'd think it's a green deck, it'd be really simple mana, but the mana is extremely tight. Um, so we have 20 lands, we got, uh, first of all, I'll reorder these here. So these are our not land lands, the Dried Arbors and the Gaius Cradles. Yep. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they're not lands, they're spells. And then the rest of this deck is, what, 9, 10, 14, is that all I have, really? Yeah. Am I missing something? It's 9, 10, 4, 6, no, you're right, okay, yeah, it's a 14 land deck. News to me. I thought it was 16. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dry Arbor can tap for mana on its own. It can. Own. But it's not Dyer's Cradle, which is essentially a spell. Sure. The, the reason I say there's are spells is because when you're opening your hand, you don't. these are not lands as far as I'm concerned. I want one of these things. Yeah. So it is a kind of greedy deck, but that's kind of the part of the course in Legacy. It's, you're trying to mitigate some of that by playing 20 lands. These decks, you should, you should just play 14 with Cradles because people are insane. Jesus. Uh, back in the day, it was just a Lux Act deck, which sometimes <laughs> feels that way sometimes, too. Um, so, yeah, so here's the basic stuff. We've got two basics, uh, two bayous. So this is the just straight blue-black build. There's some people splash white, some people splash green blue. Black. Green-black, my, my mistake. Green-black. Blue-black elves sound that, insane. There's, there's <laughs> some people splash blue sometimes. It's kind of crazy. Um, so, yeah, these are your basic lands. Uh, this is a kind of a techie choice, uh, the Pendle Haven. It's actually very good right now because people have, like, Punishing Fires and Fork Bolts and a lot of X2s. You can but, yeah, a lot of hate for stuff like Empire Master, yeah. which that if I, if well. I have a panel hit on the board, it makes a Grim Lava Master way worse, too. Yeah. So stuff like that. It's, it's actually very good. I like it a lot. Um, and so, th ordinarily, this would have been a 10th fetch land, but uh, that's a change I've made. Um, and yeah, so that's your mana base. Um, I'm getting in the lost in direction here. Oh, that's fine. I think you've been through pretty much uh, everything. Pretty much went through all of it. Okay, yeah, so, so that's the deck. Um, I think I made it sound much simpler than it is. There's a lot. It going it, on here. Each individual piece seems simple. Watching this go is like yeah. the biggest Rube Goldberg machine ever. <laughs> <laughs> on paper, it looks really harmless. Um, just a bunch of one ones. Let me just say that these are the best land of the deck. Oh, these yeah. are the best land. Dryas Cradle is cool, but these win a lot of games, which is it's just so silly how they do. But yeah, they're great. Okay. Um, cool. We're going to have you shuffle up, and we'll start playing. Okay.